This is little worth playing games while rambling incoherently into the microphone. Why? Well, that's because I can. And this time I'll be playing a Dungeon Keeper. So uh, it's not a fully blind playthrough because I did play a little of this game um, years ago when I was a kid. Uh, but I never finished it, so it's somewhat blind because I get the general gist, but I might not be... Uh, familiar with all the mechanics, all the creatures. Oops, didn't want to do that. Mm, all the creatures and all that. Uh, and I'm probably going to fail at the later levels that are more difficult. But uh, I just uh, noticed this game on GOG for like the equivalent of five bucks in my currency. So I decided it would be fun to re revisit it because I remembered it being really great, humorous, and cool. So. Without further, further ado, let's start a new game. Ever smile. Set in the realm of joy, the people of Ever smile are plagued only by aching facial muscles, and not anthrax as we had hoped. Ever smile is a disgusting land of good humor and polite frivolity. <laughs> uh, that, that's one of, one of the things I remembered about the game. Uh, the, the humor of the narration, basically the, the evil overlord being annoyed at all the pleasure uh, and uh, you know happiness in the world. And I also remember, for some reason, those vines really used to creep me out. Like, when I played this as a kid, I used to imagine that those were hands, like it's, it's a sort of like a vi vine monster or something. I'm not sure why is that, but it's just a detail that I remembered. Anyway, let's, let us proceed with the first mission. So, let's go into the Ever Smile. I, I assume the, uh, the no CD uh, image is because uh, it's running on DOSBox. Uh, but anyway, the first mission is pretty much just a... Uh, hmm, seems a little dark. Go... The gamma just slightly. Well, uh, this mission is just a tutorial. It's really uh, easy. It lets you learn the basic uh, overview of the game. Like a couple of the most uh, rudimentary buildings such as here which I actually always always found pretty cool that uh, in this game the gold is actually physically stored uh, in your domain so you see it piling up as you gather it you can even pick it up and shower your creatures with it some of them like it it increases their morale. Mm, this is the entrance to the dungeon, and that's where the creatures come in from. or something but I don't I don't think uh, those um, tips were ever fully voiced so you just get the general sort of tips uh, not, not tips but rather general information just where you when your creature creatures attacked or something then it's usually for you have tunneled into a new area yeah, or something like that I want to build it around the entrance. 
and so that the creatures might find itself in a warm and cozy uh, once they enter the dungeon. has been claimed. We should shortly research the hatchery for giving the monster good food. The first monster we've got is a fly, pretty weak. Its main sort of ability is that it flies around and scalps the map. Hey, there is the hatchery. Actually, I might take this opportunity to... Spell. You, you have various spells in this game, but one of the cooler ones is actually the uh, beginning one, which is Possession. It basically lets you possess every creature uh, that you can control. So, for example, I can possess an imp, and it, uh, and it transforms into sort of like almost like a first person exploration fighting game. You can, you can attack, you can walk around, uh, you can look around, you can see the ceiling, which is of unique for this kind of game uh, but what's the most interesting for me is that the different creatures have uh, actually different mm, like different viewpoints and I mean different ways they see the world so for example let's take the fly yeah so if you, if you possess the fly you have this. Uh, has the, you have this effect on your screen, uh, sort of you know a fractured eyeball uh, of an insect, and you can also fly, which is really cool. You can fly up to the ceiling. You also get the sound of the um, sound of the wings as you move. Actually, you can even possess a chicken. So a chicken can't really do anything aside from. Walking around, you can even, I don't think you can even control it. It moves on its own, <laughs> but it's still interesting. You can, w w you can watch the other chickens hatch and all that. Uh, although it's a little, little problematic, I'm not sure how to center the camera now. So I hope it's going to reset in the next level because I'm sort of used to that position. It's usually in. And. and maybe it's this. Okay, but I want to change the angle. Hmm. It's quite sure how. that but I, ho I hope it will, it will re reset on its own in the next level so these are actually uh, the heroes that are closing in on our little dungeon here and they'll eventually once you reach once they reach your walls they're going to bridge them in and uh, attack you they are sort of your main enemy throughout most of the missions but in some of them you also fight other keepers so basically other evil overlords with their own set of monsters, uh, similar to yours. But the heroes are actually all unique characters, uh, which represent sort of the side of it of, of good. Because of the, you're the evil overlord. Who, uh, so the classical good guys are enemies in this case. 
actually can't breach through, through the reinforced walls, so they're just walking around, uh, looking for a way in, which would be this part here, because the imps can't actually fortify that because of the, because of the water. Okay, it's a little tedious waiting for them like that, but I guess it gives me more time to figure out how exactly this camera control work. Okay. going to be in the computer assistance. Yeah, that's just hmm. this just gives you a regular top down view but well let's hope it's going to reset itself next mission because are under attack! Your creatures are attacking the enemy! So here come some of the base enemy units. You can't directly control your troops, I mean you can, but only if you have possession spells, so... Your creatures are falling in battle! It's like any you know, typical APS. You can only po point them in the direction of the enemy and hope they're going to win. Your creatures are falling in battle! You can see the flies really... I don't think it's the right home about getting your crap kit. Not each of them, but most of them. Okay, that was just pause. I guess I will figure out how to... Rotate the camera uh, between the episodes or something. Look into the um, into the manual or something. Beware! The Lord of the Land approaches. We shall cast you back into the shadows, Keeper. Your creatures are attacking the enemy. Okay, I'm going to recall the fly. Uh, wait for the enemy commander make his way to me because I can't drop my creatures on land that hasn't been touched by the imps. So it's, he seems to be a little bit confused judging from his pathing over here. Oh, the fly seems to have a death wish. Because it's really sort of like adventurous, so it's always going out in those unexplored regions to explore them. Creatures are under attack. Oh. It is payday. Which 
really wants to die. Doesn't it? Your creatures are attacking the enemy! Creatures are falling in battle. Your creatures are under attack. Hawk. War and anthrax have taken to this land like fleas to a rat. The region is, thanks to your unstinting efforts, now a major eyesore. Yeah, so we, each uh, enemy territory gets sort of both an intro and an outro when you can hear how the region has changed after your demonic horses, hordes of evil have conquered it. So, yeah, I'm going to make it simple and just probably make each uh, mission sort of each level a separate episode so this one will be a little bit shorter and I'm going to check the volumes and all that because I will always have difficulty of adjusting it correctly so that will be all for this one and see you in the next one bye